Hello, I'm Tina Frabiger, and I am presenting today with my colleague, Rebecca Conkle. Uh, we are both from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, and we are presenting today on an assessment of a vocational training program to prepare Wisconsin's prison population for skilled employment. To provide you with a little bit of background on this issue, Statistics tell us that about 75% of all the individuals, which is about seven to 800,000 each year of incarcerated persons who are released from prison, re are reincarcerated within three years of release. Um, so that obviously is a startling statistic in which we see that the majority of individuals leaving prison actually return to prison within a fairly short amount of time. Um, when asked, individuals who are incarcerated, what kind of concerns they have uh, post-incarceration uh, that may impact their ability to remain crime-free. Uh, one of the most common areas identified is finding employment. Uh, so about 90, 96% of individuals who are incarcerated are concerned that they will not be able to find adequate employment. Um, and this is especially concerning given that 87% believe that finding employment is a key to them remi remaining crime-free. And research really supports this uh, belief in that it finds that there is a strong correlation between employment uh, and rate of recidivism in which individuals who are able to find employment post-release are much less likely to recidivate. Uh, and individuals who are leaving incarceration experience many roadblocks in securing meaningful employment, um, such as discrimination and stigma of having a past criminal history, and also issues with page way gaps in which they uh, oftentimes will only be able to secure low income jobs. So what can be done about this? Well, one of the things that can help uh, to increase individuals' chances of finding employment is to provide voc vocational and employment programming as well as in-person work experience while an individual is incarcerated. This not only increases their chances, their likelihoods of finding a job post-incarceration, but it also has a tendency to reduce the amount of time between leaving the institution and finding that in employment, unemployment finding that employment. And this is incredibly important as research finds that the shorter the period is, uh, the less likely an individual is to recidivate. So given this research, our study looked at a program that is being um, offered currently in Wisconsin prisons uh, for CNC programming. And CNC programming is a skilled labor uh, in which an, a machine and tool process is used to cut materials into functional items. For our study that we conducted, we actually had two components. We had a quantitative and a qualitative component. We did run into several limitations with the quantitative data uh, with a lot of missing information. So we are only presenting today the qualitative findings uh, because we do not feel certain enough that our results are valid enough from the quantitative portion um, until those limitations are overcome with missing data. So uh, we're just gonna focus on two of the research programs or questions that we looked into that were relevant to our qualitative data. And these looked at what are CNC's participants' perceptions of the CNC program, uh, as well as what are key staff's uh, perceptions of, of, of the program. So our sample included individuals um, from two prisons offering CNC in Wisconsin. The first was Ellsworth, which is an all-female institution, and the second was Racine Correctional Institute, which is a male institution. Uh, so the data that we used for the qualitative portion was paper and pencil surveys, which provided us some demographic information of CNC participa participants, some information about their, po their past employment history, as well as what their perceptions were of CNC and their, its usefulness post-incarceration. We also conducted focus groups with participants uh, as, and key interviews, or, sorry, interviews with CNC key staff.
So when we consider the participant demographics, um, we had both female and male participants included in the study. We had um, 10 of the 25 participants were females, making up 40% of the sample, and 15 of the 25 participants were males, making up 60% of the sample. In terms of race, white was the most prevalent race among participants, um, with 76% of participants is identifying as white, followed by 16% identifying as black and 8% identifying as another race. Here we note that one of the participants who identified as white also identified as white, Hispanic, or Latino. The average participant age was just under 37 years old. Next, we asked participants um, about their lifetime employment history. So when we asked participants if they had ever been employed at any point throughout their life, 94% reported they had, had held employment. Further, participants were asked what their longest term um, at an employer was. About half reported their longest length of employment was three or more years. And then lastly, we asked participants if they had ever um, been fired from a job at any point during their life, and approximately 40% reported they had been fi fired, whereas 60% had not. We also asked participants about their employment history in the six months leading up to their incarceration. First, 76% of participants reported being employed in the six months prior to their current incarceration. Next, of those who had been employed, about three-fourths reported being um, full-time employment, whereas only a quarter were part-time employed. Across all participants, about so those who were employed as well as those who were unemployed, the average participant worked about 21 hours per week and the average pay was about $12 an hour. Next, to gain an understanding of program experiences and ideas for program improvement, we conducted focus groups uh, with CNC participants. The first focus group was made up of nine females and the second focus group was made up of 16 males. Based on these focus groups, three general um, three general themes emerged. The first was the need for employment that was well-paying and would lead to a stable job, and also employers that would hire people with a history of felony convictions. Especially among the females, there was a theme of needing self-sufficiency so that they could be reliant on their selves uh, rather than men or other partners or criminal behaviors. Among both um, male and female participants was a theme of need needing to be able to take care of both themselves as well as their children. Participants also um, had several expectations about what their CNC certificate would allow post-release. First, they felt that having the CNC certificate and um, the training behind it would lead them to be able to have a stable and well-paying job. They also felt that their training would be a stepping stone for their career advancement. Many males in our sample desired to demonstrate their drive uh, through employment and being at a well-paying job. And they felt that um, having these jobs would allow them to be trusted and gain respect of others. And then among all participants, they believe that the program and the subsequent job that they would have in the CNC field um, would uh, help them desist from crime and stay out of prison. In terms of program improvement, uh, both, both the um, male and females really gave strong appraisals of the program. However, the males voice that they wish they had community release. So whereas the females are able to attend the technical school to uh, complete their training, all the male training takes place within, uh, within the prison. And so they didn't have as much access to machines or other tools. They also ran into problems for taking um, certification exams that are held online because of web pop-ups that aren't allowed within the prison. 
both male and females talked about um, that larger classrooms that could hold more machines or larger machines would allow for more hands-on training. And they also voiced um, the desire to have additional training or courses following their original CNC program certificate that would allow them to continue to use these skills so they wouldn't become rusty uh, from the time they finished the program until the time they were released and um, were able to obtain employment. So based on survey data, we found that the majority of participants in the survey thought it would either be easy or very easy to find a CNC related job after release. And that uh, nearly all participants, so 96 participants thought they would be uh, able to retain this job um, for at least six months following their release. Although based on focus groups, um, variations, were seen and what they thought they would obtain as an hourly wage and ranged from anywhere to $13 to $25 an hour. Uh, one inmate did state in the focus group that money is money and I can work my way up. I wouldn't wanna go lower than $13, but $13 is better for seven. When asked about the wages that they expected to um, attain in their um, careers in CNC after release, the average wage uh, that they thought they would expect would be about $17 an hour. Next, we conducted um, interviews with four CNC staff members, and uh, these interviews were gain, uh, used to gain further insight into participant selection processes and the effectiveness of the CNC program. Among staff members, they noted that the admission process was long and oftentimes lasted four, five to six months before admission to the program. Additionally, there were lots of requirements, uh, such as having a 10th grader higher adult academic placement exam uh, score. Participants had to have their high school degree, GED or equivalent, and the participants must be on good behavior status. Furthermore, females must have um, been granted community custody before starting the program since the course was held at an outside location. And then for males, priority was given to those with a higher likelihood of being transferred to a minimum security uh, facility with it or within two years of completing their sentence. The key staff members did note here that even though there were a lot of requirements and a lengthy application process, that it was highly competitive to get into this program and especially among males. They did note that there were about 250 males currently on the waiting list at the time that we conducted these interviews. Next, we asked the key staff about the skills that were delivered through this program. And um, across the board, the staff members believed that the program gave participants the required skills they would need to find a CNC job following um, release from incarceration. More of they talked about different types of skills that were um, practiced by participants uh, in the CNC program. Two types of skills that popped up were soft skills, and these include things such as mock interviews, effective communication styles, and appropriate workplace behavior. Specific to the soft skills, um, some of the staff talked about doing mock interviews with uh, potential future employers and did say that there were several times where uh, participants of the program were offered jobs following their mock interview. So it had really worked as a real interview. Furthermore, companies have contacted uh, staff members of the CNC program to ask when the next cohort of um, CNC uh, participants will be ready to hire. So there's high demand for these individuals. And one reason this might be is because key uh, staff members felt that the participants were extremely motivated and they were impressed with the work and the demonstration of desire um, for success and the ability of the participants to work together as a team. One key staff member did note that their current cohort had straight A's, which was considerably higher um, and uh, irregular compared to their general classes that took place at the technical college, and they were especially impressed with that. Next, we asked um, key staff members 
what they thought the program could do in terms of improvements. So even though they stated that they understood and acknowledged that there were employment barriers for formerly incarcerated persons, um, so such as restrictions on where they can work, um, having limited work history, and a lack of technology while incarcerated to look for jobs, they did feel that they had no concerns about participants finding CNC employment once they were released. They did agree with, um, with some of the areas for improvement that the participants discussed, such as having an increased uh, access to equipment and tools, as well as textbook and study materials, and more machines for the students to practice with hands-on. Some of the challenges of this study were missing data. Originally, we had collected data on 360 individuals. However, due to missing data, uh, 160 of those were dropped from the study. So we ended up only with 200 participants. Moreover, some of those participants had missing data, so we weren't able to do propensity score matching as hoped, and we were concerned about the validity of these findings. To address this and to continue to do the quantitative portion of analyses, um, we've requested and received in about the past week additional needed data from uh, the Wisconsin Department of Corrections. Even though we weren't able to test the quantitative components of this study, uh, based on our interviews and surveys, we found that CNC participants had favorable outlooks on employment and really did want to work rather than rely on other people for um, support financially. They also gave high assessments of the program and uh, both participants as well as employers believed that it would allow them to be successful and obtain CNC career paths. And these individuals were in high demand um, from an industry that needs um, more employees in the CNC area.